You live, we all do, in a universe of attraction, which means this is an inclusion-based universe. There's no exclusion. So when you see something that you want and you say yes to it, you are calling to you this thing that you want. But when you see something and you shout no at it, you are calling to you this thing you do not want. There's no yes or no, there's only attention to it. And attention to it causes an activation within you. And if it's there long enough, law of attraction begins to respond to your active vibration. So, you dear hearts are a mixed bag. You're offering vibration about lots of things. And that's all right, because after all, you came to do some step one. And you can't do some step one if there's not some contrast that causes you to choose. That's the difference between you and your inner being. You said, I'll go forth and I will explore contrast and I will come to new awarenesses about what improvements would be. And your inner being said, and we will stay here. And when you find an improvement, we will focus upon it unendingly until you and we are able to bring it about into full manifestational form. And everything you see around you has happened because there has been a vibration and then enough thought about it that a thought has turned to a thing. We've enjoyed this interaction immensely. It's lovely to come together with you. We'd like to chew with you upon the things that are important to you. You'll notice as we are playing together here today that it is our powerful intention to help you discern the perspectives that you are holding that are helpful to you and the perspectives that you are holding that aren't helpful to you. Because once you've asked and once it's been given and once you have found a way to come into steady alignment that's what step three is once you are in the receiving mode of what you're asking for then those thoughts begin turning to things and oh what a sweet spot that is and step four is really when you're really good at step three funny to give a whole step to just being good at the step before but it's really worth doing because every now and again you just stumble into the receiving mode and something wonderful happens. But to do it on purpose and to be able to maintain it and to realize when you're slipping from it and then to do something about it, to deliberately focus your thoughts, to meditate when things are not going well, to get a good night's sleep, to wake up the next day, to deliberately get off on the right vibrational foot, to accomplish the mastery of being in the receiving mode. That's really what you were born knowing you can do, expecting that you would do, and it's really what we've come to remind you that you can do. Step four is the mastery of that alignment. And then step five, maybe our favorite step. Step five is when you're back in step one, exploring contrast, but you're not mad at yourself. You could say that your inner being dwells always in step five because your inner being never loses vibrational altitude by focusing on whatever you're about. Your inner being has true compassion, the ability to see you where you are without dipping in vibration because your inner being is always solution oriented, always focused upon where you are really at this time. Empathy. You empathize with each other. You say to your friend, you need to be there for me. And I'm in a bad place, so I don't care where you are. You need to join me and complain with me about this thing that is bothering me. And usually, if you're good at influence, you will influence your friend in time to join you there. Doesn't feel good to you, doesn't feel good to your friend, but most humans, I love you so much, are fickle. But your inner being won't ever join you in that lower vibration. And that's why you always have that guiding light to feel your way into alignment with. That's why your vortex can always be felt by you unless you're too far gone in the opposite direction for now. But after a good night's sleep, you're back in the game again. So now you know everything we know about everything that matters to anyone. I'm so glad to be here. Your analogy of the train. I want the engine of desire without any engine of doubt. Of course you do. Is there any way to get there other than experience? That's really the best way. Okay. But here's the thing. You could go general and get there right away. Listen to these statements. I like being here
Things are always working out for me, another engine. I like learning, another engine. I'm getting better at this every day, another engine. I'm having a good time with this, another engine. I can figure it out as I go, another engine. My guidance system is active and alive for me, another engine. My inner being knows who I am and what I want, another engine. If you are general enough, you can funk a whole bunch of engines down going the way you want to go with no resistance. And you know what's wonderful about that? Everything that's in your vortex during that run is being allowed by you. Pretty good. But if you're saying, I want something more specific, and the feeling within you is, but I've wanted it for a long time, then without even meaning to. And so it's better to stay off the subjects that are bothersome. And in most cases, just be general. That's why your children are so powerful in the beginning. Because their desires are pure. They're not worried about too much, too soon. You can return to that. That's beautiful. So maybe avoid the big, huge, looking for a miracle thing. Well, just the fact that you're calling it a miracle. I, knew you were I really that. want this thing that there's not a snowball's chance in hell of me getting. <laughs> it would be a miracle. Yeah. Not so much. Yes. And how about when you are shooting off rockets of desire that involve another person? Do they have to have the same rockets of desire? Well, the thing that's nice about that, earlier when we were talking about how there's so much in your vortex that you may not even be consciously aware of because you've put it there over a long period of time. And so your inner being and law of attraction have this wonderful way of bringing into the equation all of the things that are important to you. So when what's in your vortex involves another person, usually Many of the things that are in your vortex are in the other person's vortex as well. And the thing, we are so happy that you've asked this question, because the thing that is most likely to cause most people to put more engines on their train track going in opposition to what they want is their awareness of what other people think about the same thing. It isn't what they think that puts engines on the track going the other way. It's what you're thinking about what they're thinking. You have to think it. So if you don't have your nose so much in what everybody else is thinking about, then you're not as likely to put those engines of resistance on the other end of your train. Years ago, someone asked us a question because she wanted to live in the mountains and he wanted to live at the beach. And they both wanted to live together. But they felt like they were really at odds. How can the universe deliver to each of us what we want when we want seemingly opposing things? You got a mountain on the beach. Well, I wish we'd thought of that back then. <laughs> <laughs> he liked the really high altitude, she liked the sand. And so we said to them, if each of you, or just the woman we were talking to, but if each of you, or just the one we're talking to, if you will focus upon the essence of why you want to be there, rather than the specifics, just focus upon why it is you want what you want. In your vortex, there is plenty that matches the other. But when you feel that the other is keeping you from something you want, so you're opposing them, that's when you put the engines down going in the opposite direction. There is so much more compatibility and harmony between the essence of what you each want than you realize. Something more? There's an issue of a child. This woman that I'm dating feels strongly that she wants to have a child and I'm older. I, I, not to say I can't have a child at an older age, but I don't see that in my path. Uh, maybe I should be open to that. I just It's a confusing thought right now for me. Well, this is a really good conversation to have following the one that we just had because that seems like really two opposing 
points of view. Same relationship, same two people, and somewhat different desires, or so it seems. Here's the thing that's most interesting. If the other really is determined to have something, and you're really determined not to, surprisingly, you're on the same page. Because the thing that you push against is what you get. It's really interesting and so as you think about what you want and why you want as you think about wanting a relationship wanting a combining with another wanting a compatibility wanting to move together toward interests wanting to be satisfied by another and another to be satisfied by you wanting to live happily ever after wanting to feel fulfilled as you focus upon those things, not what you don't want, but what you do want, and that's what's really active within you, often, as you activate that within you, it is met by those things that are activated in another. Sometimes someone wants something because they're trying to fill a void, and sometimes the very void that they're trying to fill is filled with the love and the attention that you are offering. and so. We wouldn't call it a deal breaker, and we wouldn't try to make a decision right away, yes or no, we're going to do that. We would just keep focusing upon how we want to feel in our experience. And part of what is making you feel that way is it feels to you that you want freedom, and you want the freedom to give attention to the other. You don't have to justify or explain why this feels better. And your partner doesn't have to justify or explain why the other feels better. If you can just stay focused upon what you want, you most likely will find harmonics with the other that will be satisfying to both. Now, we're going to change the subject just a little bit because it will be easier for most of you to hear it, but this is a powerful way of explaining what we just said to you. So let's say that instead of that, that is a different subject, let's say that one of you wants monogamy in your relationship and the other one wants an open relationship, quite different ideas. And so, if the one who wants monogamy just focuses upon that, feels good about it, thinks about why you want it, then that's the vibration that you're emitting, and that's what the universe will yield to you. If the other is thinking about wanting an open relationship, and is focused upon that, and only upon that, then that's what the universe will yield to the other one. So, two people who really do want different things, and the universe will bring them, different experiences so that each of them get what they want. But what usually happens, instead of this one being clear about what is wanted, and this one being clear about what is wanted, this one who wants monogamy is pushing hard against that one who wants something else, and in the process is including what is not wanted in that vibration. And the other one is usually doing the same thing, pushing hard against that one about what is not wanted, and therefore including unwanted and so both are muddied vibrations both are offering vibrations about what they want and don't want and want and don't want and want and don't want and each of them are blaming the other for how they feel and neither one of them is getting what they want and so we're not saying that you could stand in the middle of a specific relationship and offer a vibration about what you want and that the other one will naturally join you in what you want but usually there's enough harmony with the essence of what you want that with or without a child you can both be extremely happy that action is not required to bring the happiness and when each of you or even one of you discovers your happiness without that condition then you're really in a good place because when you're in vibrational alignment with who you are so that the condition really is irrelevant, it wouldn't upset your apple cart if there were to be a child, or it wouldn't upset her apple cart if there were not to be. 